Hey guys, Bryce Halt is here, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to set up Phonex TV Connector. For this video, I'm focusing specifically on Phonex's new TV accessory, the TV Connector. The TV Connector uses Phonex Airstream technology and is directly compatible with any of Phonex's direct connectivity wireless hearing aids. That means that the Phonex TV Connector is directly compatible with the Audeo B direct hearing aids, the Marvel, and the Paradise line of hearing aids, including the custom in the ear Verto Marvel 312 custom devices but it excludes any of the Verto Marvel in-the-ear devices that use size 10 batteries. Phonak's use of Airstream technology is a welcomed improvement over their previous TV accessory, the TV Link, because the TV connector does not need to use any type of intermediary device like the neck-worn Compilot 2 or the Compilot Air in order to send audio from the TV directly into your hearing aids. The TV connector is an awesome piece of technology from Phonak for their most current wirelessly capable hearing aids. But if you got your devices that came out before the Audeo B Direct line of hearing aids, then you're still going to have to use the TV Link 2 accessory from Phonak. But for today, let's get started with showing you how to set up the Phonak TV connector. Your TV connector should come with three cables. One is a USB cable which is used to power the TV connector. The other two cables are used to send audio from the TV or other audio sources to the TV connector. One cable is the Toslink cable, otherwise known as the optical audio cable, and the other cable is an analog audio cable that uses a 3.5 millimeter jack. The optical audio out cable is the preferred cable of choice when setting up the TV connector, and that's for two reasons. The first reason is that it's generally a more stable connection between the TV and the TV connector. The second reason is that it generally will also not divert all of the audio away from the external speakers on the TV when you are using the TV connector. That means that you can use the TV connector and others in your environment can still hear the TV through the TV's external speakers. If you're already using the optical audio out cable for, say, a set of external speakers or, say, a sound bar that's connected to the TV, then what you're going to need to do is get a splitter cable either from an electronics store or purchase one online in order to use those external speakers in conjunction with your TV connector. To start the setup process, Start by plugging in the TV connector's power supply using the USB cable. Plug the larger end of the USB into the wall adapter for use with the electrical outlet. If your TV has a USB port on the back of the TV, then you can plug the larger end of the TV cable into that port instead, if it's available. Next, plug the smaller end of the USB cable into the slot in the middle of the back of the TV connector, which is also the slot closest to the button with the chain link symbol on it. The TV connector should now turn on automatically, and you should see a green indicator light on the back of the TV connector turn on. And then the color should then turn white, indicating that the TV connector is in standby mode and not transmitting any audio. If the TV connector does not turn on automatically, press the power button on top of the TV connector, and you should see a green light followed by a solid white light. We now need to plug in the audio cable that we are going to use with our TV or our other audio source. Both the TOS link and the analog cable will plug into the same dedicated audio socket on the TV connector, but we need to make sure we use the correct cable for our chosen audio source. If you have a newer TV, you should have an optical audio out port somewhere along the back or the side of the TV, which looks like this. If you are using an older TV or if you are plugging into a different audio source, like a stereo receiver or a desktop or laptop computer, you should see a 3.5 millimeter headphone out or audio out cable port somewhere on the source device. Once you've determined which cable is correct for your situation, first plug the correct end of the cable into the TV connector, then plug the free end of the cable into the TV or the other audio source. If your TV is turned on and playing audio, and if we have successfully connected the audio cable from the TV to the TV connector, then the indicator on the TV connector light will turn from white to solid green. Now it's time to connect your hearing aids to the TV connector. 
Press the connect button on the back of the TV connector, which has the symbol that looks similar to a chain link on it, and you should see an indicator light start blinking blue. Make sure your hearing aids are switched on and within three feet of the TV connector. You should hear a confirmation beep in your hearing aids when the connection was successful. Now, this step can also take up to 10 seconds, so be patient. If your TV is on and you are playing audio through the TV connector, you should then automatically start hearing the audio from the TV or other audio source directly in your ears through the hearing aids. If your TV is on and you don't automatically start hearing the audio from the TV in your hearing aids, press and hold the rocker switch on the back of your hearing aids or press and hold the push button until you hear a melody of beeps indicating that you've switched programs and then you should start hearing the audio from the TV directly through your hearing aids. That is it. You can have a total of two TV connectors connected up to any one pair of hearing aids, meaning that you can have two TV connectors in your home, one connected to your living room, one connected to your bedroom TV. Whenever you turn on the TV in one of those rooms, you're gonna automatically start getting the signal in your hearing aids if you're within 50 feet of that TV connector. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit more about the ins and outs of using the TV connector on a daily basis, be sure to look out for a future video where I go over some daily usage tips, as well as some helpful troubleshooting steps if, for some reason, you have any trouble setting up the TV connector or using it on a daily basis. Until that time, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos just like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you have any ideas for future videos or future content that you want me to cover in a future video, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks.